I'm going to call this trick triple random. We're going to let our spectator uh, find a card in this deck by picking some random numbers, right? So you can tell them, look, I think it's pretty shuffled, but it won't really matter because you're going to find the card at random. In fact, we're going to do it three times. That's why it's called triple random. In the meantime, I'll draw your attention to this prediction card right here. It will be out in view the whole time. I'm going to put it under the mat right here so we can kind of see it. And we'll ask our spectator to roll the dice when they're ready. We can roll them a few times to make sure that there's nothing funky about these dice. And they will decide when they've rolled a random number. Let's say they do that right now. Here we've got a 6, 6, and a 1. That is a 13, according to my calculations. So let's count down 13 cards. Watch this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And we get to a 7. Remember, we needed three times. So there's one random. There's another random. Here's our third and final random number, uh, the seven. Let's go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that card is, in fact, the queen of hearts. Triple random. Three numbers, a random card, and a prediction that matches queen of hearts. All right. Very, very easy to do trick. Um, this is pretty much self-working, as a matter of fact. I should point that out. Here's what you're going to do. Here's the setup. We got our prediction card here. We'll talk about that in just a second. Regular dice. And um, a deck of cards that's set up a special way. I'll show you how it's set up. First of all, um, you'll notice I spread them out and uh, originally because I want them to see that they are a shuffle deck. Because they are a shuffle deck to a point. The first few cards, hmm, they're in a special order, but the rest of the deck is relatively shuffled and it all looks shuffled too. So here's what we have, and, and uh, I'll put this in the description, I suppose, so you know the order, but it's important that you have the right cards um, starting from the top of the deck on down several cards. Now the suits will not matter, except of course when we get to the force card, but the suits will not matter, but here's what you need how you need to stack the deck. The top two cards can be any two cards. We're gonna call those just indifferent cards. They're just fillers, okay? The next card needs to be a 10. Again, the suits don't matter, okay? But you're gonna have any two cards, a 10, then a seven, a six, and a five, okay? That's the first setup. Probably the hardest thing to remember is that. Any two cards, a 10, a seven, six, and a five. Next, we're going to put cards king, descending down through ace like this king uh, queen jack 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 ace and then one final card our force card okay pretty simple any two 10 7 6 5 king through ace and then our force card so what happens is when you do this trick it's a stack. And if you want to do a false shuffle, you can. I don't think it's necessary, but probably helpful if you want to do that. If you want to do some kind of a false cut, you could even say, you know, we could mix these cards up a little bit, but we really won't need to because you're going to pick the card you want. So I just did a false cut. It's not great, but you know, it's just more movement. And then you can start the trick. So you can do it that way if you want to. I don't know if you absolutely have to. You can actually do some of these bold false cuts too while you're talking. Sometimes I'll do this while I'm talking to somebody and I'll just be cutting the cards like this while I'm talking and just the movement behind them, behind in the background, uh, looks like I'm mixing up the cards when I'm in fact, I'm not. I'm putting right back together. It's a very bold false cut. I'm taking this and going like this and then I'm doing this and most people don't even notice. But anyway, if you have a fancier false shuffle or false cuts, use it or not. I don't think it'll matter. Because what happens is the rest of it is self-working. Let me show you how it works mathematically. Because we have, um, because we're using dice for starters, that means the only numbers they can get are three, because we're using three dice, so they could get a three, uh, that's the lowest number they get, the highest number they're gonna get is an 18. And that's really important because that's where we want to direct the spectator to the force card. It works like this. When they roll, uh, a low number, let's say a three through six, three, four, five, and six, we're going to consider that a low number. You do it slightly different than if they roll a seven through 18, but it's hardly noticeable. I'll show you what I mean. 
when they roll, let's say they roll a three, in fact, if they rolled a three, when we go to count down the cards, we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to land on that 10. And that 10 is really important because that 10 is going to take us to the next random number, right? If they roll a three through a six, when we say we want it three times, we're not going to count the roll as a random number. We're going to say we're going to do this three times, right? So they rolled a three and we got to a 10. The 10 is going to take us to the next card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And it's not quite the right one yet because that takes us to a seven. Now, when we count down seven, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and that will take us to our force card. So we said we do this three times, and here they can see there are three random cards. That's our three time thing. Now, if they happen to roll a number greater than uh, six, right? If they get something that's more like this, there's an eight, nine, 10, 11. They got a six, a two, and a three. If they get an 11, we do it the same way, we just say it differently. We say, okay, so uh, we wanted three random numbers. So now there's their first random number. This time we count the dice as a random number because we go, okay, you got uh, an 11. So let's see what's at the 11th position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 gets us to a nine. And then we need one more, right? One, two, three, one more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine gets us to a queen of hearts. And what do you know? That's what we predicted. So again, it's just because of this stack that it works. You just have to remember that sometimes you're going to say the, th the, the, uh, the dice is the first random number and then we need two cards. Or you're going to say, here's three cards, there's our three random numbers. Nobody notices it. doesn't make any difference. So as long as you have the setup right, two in different cards, a 10, seven, six, and a five, and then king through ace, followed by whatever card you want to force, then you too can do the random prediction. Easy to do, fun to do, and quite mystifying, if I do say so myself.